everybody. I'm calling this one Do It Yourself King or Slave. You're either the king or you're the slave. You do it to yourself. And uh, I see a lot of people doing it to themselves and they don't know what they're talking about because they sit there and say, I'm sovereign, but I'm the secured party creditor. Well, that's not sovereign. They'll laugh you out of there. Um, so um, anyways, either you're the king or you're a slave. There's nothing else. If you go into commerce, then give and then you give up your sovereignty. And that's all there is to it. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action, which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law. Okay, so any of this stuff is all Roman law, it's all civil law, it's all municipal law. Uh, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. By this means, citizens' birth rights become of no effect, and their rights are reduced to the inferior character of statutory civil rights, mere legislative privileges. And, uh, and that's a book uh, by Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court called The Non-Ratification non non of the 14th Amendment, uh, which is associated with the, the um, um, Diet versus Turner. This is the Commentaries of Gaius and the Rules of Ulpian, which was a book written about 350 A.D. And, um, the, uh, uh, by, and it's translated by these liars in 1874. Uh, to take an instance, when a person sui juris has given himself an adoption or a woman passed under manus, all her property, incorporal or corporal, and all that is due them is acquired by the adopting father or, or a co optionator except those things which perish by capitus diminutio of which kind are usufruct and obligation to services on the part of freedmen contracted by oath and matters enforceable by a statutable action. All statutes are contracts, and uh, you have to understand that. And now we're going to insert a little uh, advertisement. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click on the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when there's a new upload. I'm going to try and upload uh, uh, one a day. Um, hopefully, uh, well, at least six a week, but uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyways, back to the topic at hand. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of the municipal court is acting as an administrative officer, not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely as an extension, as an agent for the involved agency. He's bought and paid for. The only but only in a ministerial and not a discretionary capacity. He's bought and paid for. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. He's bought and paid for. It's impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with a state, such as a voluntary subscription to license. All jurisdictional facts supporting claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. Okay, so it's it's a contract, a voluntary subscription to a license. Okay, voluntary. It's all contracts. It's commerce. State citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. State citizenship is a vested substantial property right, and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights, okay? That's where you're the king, okay? Uh, and, and if you argue a statute, then you're saying that you're subject to their statute. If you argue a statute, you're arguing the terms of the contract. If you argue the Uniform Commercial Code, you're saying that you're one of the slaves. You can do a common law contract without going into commerce. Another advertisement, announcing a subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International. The recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 a month because it avoids advertising only. Originally, when I wanted to set this thing up, I was going to have some exclusive content, but then I started thinking about it, and, uh, and there's really nothing that I want to put on there exclusively because the, um, uh, the only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through their fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it. And so, you know, I can't think of anything that I want to have on there exclusively. I may come up with some things, but... Um, uh, but the bottom line is is that um, right now uh, there's nothing exclusive. You'll only avoid the advertising. So $1.99 a month, uh, and, um, and you'll be able to donate a little bit to, uh, to the cause. Uh, anyways, I'm currently publishing uh, six videos a week. 
Um, so uh, if you if you decide to subscribe, I, I appreciate it. Um, back to the topic at hand, uh, Unidroid, okay? This, uh, when you start talking about uh, the law merchant, Uniform Commercial Code, it's all tied into Unidroid. And Unidroid, and this is actually, uh, Canada signed on to the Unidroid Treaty too. Uh, uh, Unidroid stands for the Unification of Private Law, and the website says that 63 countries have, have adopted it. It's designed to be automatically implemented. United, Canada and United States have been signatories to the Unidroid Treaty for over 30 years. When I say automatically implemented, what that means is that Unidroid goes ahead and makes a change, and the changes flow down to all the member states. And so the Unidroid website says nothing about Texas or Arizona or any of the American states or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, the Unidroid application in the American states and the Canadian provinces is only in federal areas. Unidroid covers negotiable instruments, civil procedures, civil liability, secured transactions, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, contracts, uh, um, banking law, uh, transportation, leasing, franchising, hotels, insurance, uh, anything related to marriage, divorce, children, municipal law, much more. Uh, Canada and United States are signatories. As of this date, 63 countries have signed on to the Unidroid Treaty. Texas is not listed, Arizona is not listed, no American state is listed, Alberta is not listed, British Columbia is not listed, Ontario is not listed, no Canadian province is listed. Therefore, anything involving motor vehicles or the courts is both commercial and federal, and by consent. This is their website. Uh, let's get in closer, uh, talk about commercial contracts. Okay, so commercial contracts, not all contracts, just commercial ones cultural property, franchising, um, and this is another page, and we'll zoom in here. Uh, it's a talk, if you look at the header, it's the Unidroid International Institution Institute for the Unification of Private Law. Uh, leasing, security interests, transport, uh, banking law, capital markets, civil procedure, contracts, cultural property, franchising, hotel keepers, insurance, intellectual property, leasing, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, movement of persons, negotiable instruments, covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles, anything related to marriage, divorce, and children. And, uh, and this is some treaties that are shown on the website. Uh, the 1955 Benelux Treaty on Compulsory Insurance Against Civil Liability in Respect of Motor, motor Vehicles, the 1958 Convention Concerning the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children, and the 1959 European Convention on European Compulsory Insurance Against and Civil Liability in, in Respect of Motor Vehicles. So uh, they want to compel you to buy that insurance because they're the ones that are selling it. <laughs> The term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, property, uh, or cargo for hire. Now, the interesting thing is, is that they're calling it motor vehicles in this treaty. And then in the federal code, and this is the criminal code, Title 18, they're saying that it has to be passengers or property for hire. And so most people are just traveling to and from work. And, um, and what these Satanist code enforcers do is they can presume under the Federal Tax Lien Act that because it's registered, you're one of the slaves. That's where, where, where it all comes to. The term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fair fee, rate, charge, or other consideration or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. Um... And that's Title 18, United States Code, Section 31. This is the Texas Transportation Code speed signs. Uh, 201.904 show the maximum lawful speed for commercial motor vehicles, truck, tractors. So it says speed signs are for the show the maximum lawful speed for commercial motor vehicles, truck, tractors, truck, trailers, truck, semi-trailers, motor vehicles engaged in business of transporting passengers for compensation or hire. And, and, and yet these Satanists, code enforcer pigs go ahead and assault people every day the reason for the initial speeding uh, detention uh, uh, speeding and running a red light are not a breach of the peace so that's the question to ask the pig Canada and United States are signatories to the Unidroid Treaty as of this date 63 countries have signed on to the Unidroid Treaty this is the men membership list only a part of it but it shows Australia Canada Argentina China um, 
Turkey, United Kingdom, United States, Venezuela, a whole bunch of them here. Anything in America, Canada, and the United States uh, involving motor vehicles or the courts or the banks or finance or municipal corporations is actually federal and falls under the Unidroit Treaty. There's created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state. Uh, see Howard versus Sinking Fund of Louisville. That's a Supreme Court case that's uh, cited in the Schwartz versus O'Hara Township School District, uh, Pennsylvania case. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden. See, it's all under martial law, and that, that's all why it's all unidroit. The, with penalties for disobedience of its commands or crimes. Okay, it's, it's contracts. It's all contracts. It all falls under unidroit. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. Legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its applications. It all falls under unidroit. Everything is in admiralty. A writ of error doth not lie upon a sentence in admiralty, but an appeal. And that's uh, a book four of the Institutes and the Laws of England by Coke in like 1500. Okay, and that's cited in Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. And what I'm saying is, is that, is that, Admiralty in in Admiralty you appeal, and what do they have? The courts of appeals are all over. Matter of fact, that's all you can do is appeal. Um, all appeals are in Admiralty. It's called a court of appeals. It's the same thing. This is the same thing that precipitated the War of Independence. This is the causes and necessities for taking up arms. Statutes have passed uh, extending the courts of Admiralty and Vice Admiralty far beyond their ancient limits. Um, for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property, to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish an order and use and exercise of law martial. And so we saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. And uh, this is the cause and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Declaration of Independence is full of this stuff. And uh, if you understand what the Declaration of Independence is, it's basically a list of grievances. And so for abolishing the free system of English laws in the neighboring provinces, establishing therein an a a arbitrary government, that sounds like military dictatorship, um, and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule, military dictatorship, he has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing for protecting them by a mock trial. Sounds like a military dictatorship bought and paid for a clerk masquerading as a judge. Remember, we talked about that earlier when a judge is uh, dealing with a statute. He's bought and paid for. Uh, Congress claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections and repel invasions, impose martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an extension of military and municipal jurisdiction of Congress. But where's the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, etc., etc., etc. And that's found in the book called Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett, Utah Supreme Court. And that's associated with the case Diet v. Turner. The 14th Amendment is an extension of national military powers presently used in a municipal character and enforced by municipal laws stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article I tribunals. And so again, that's by this Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court. And now another advertisement. Check out my other videos. Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Corrupt Corporate, uh, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1, 2, and 3, Do It Yourself How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service, Martial Laws Here, Do It Yourself No Income Tax, Do It Yourself No Sales Tax, Do It Yourself Traffic Stop, Do It Yourself Free Mail, Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it's all commerce. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute. And, uh, and to go on, it says, where an action is founded entirely upon a statute and the only object of it is to recover a penalty or a forfeiture, such action is a penal action. And the words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture or to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. It's a contract. It's all uniform commercial code. 
It's all Unidroid. It's all coming from the UN. The words forfeit and penalty are substantially anonymous. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute and bought with the sole object of recovering a penalty or forfeiture imposed as punishment for specific offense, while remedial action is one brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. Uh, a penal action is one, and that basically says the same thing. It's a different site, but it basically says the same thing. Um, um, anyways, we'll go on to the next one. A penal action is a civil suit brought for the recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. Such actions are civil actions, on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, and on the other to actions for private injuries in which the party agreed may by statute recover punitive damages. So you sit there in that kangaroo court and you ask the clerk masquerading as judge up at the front, is this civil or criminal? And he'll say, well, it's quasi-criminal. <laughs> Well, because it, this, this is what it is. It's civil. But they don't want to admit it because they can assault you and throw you in jail and do all sorts of stuff. They're thieves. They're getting you into one of their so-called contracts so they can assault you. Allegations of legal conclusions provided only by a notice of nature of offense defined by statute upon appearance ticket or citation cannot be permitted to supply essential allegations of fact. A mere conclusion of a pleader uh, cannot be availed of to initiate and invite an issue of fact. Allegation of conclusion of law tenders no issue. Where there are no depositions, admissions, or affidavits, the court has no facts to rely on for summary determination. If the record does not show upon its face the facts necessary to give jurisdiction, they will be presumed not to have existed. A pleading cannot be aided by reason of facts not averred. Facts necessary to a cause of action but not alleged must be taken as having no existence. So these Satanist pigs drag you into their so-called court. And so this is the argument right here. There's, there's, no, there's no crime. And, and they're testifying. That's exactly what they're doing is they're testifying and they have no first-hand knowledge of anything. they got to have a witness. The government of the Virgin of Islands cannot assume facts not in evidence, even if the judge believes the facts to be accurate. Okay, And so the liar cannot testify, and unless the facts not in evidence, in other words, there's got to be evidence, and that means affidavits. And a clerk masquerading as a judge is sitting there playing stupid. Okay, That's what these clerks masquerading as judges do. They sit there and play stupid. It is noted as significant that the act constituting the court dispenses with trial by jury, uh, a provision which is distinctly upheld in the spite of the Seventh Amendment. With respect to the status of the court, the opinion concludes, while it has been said that the creation of a special function of the court definitely reflects its status as a legislative court, there is propriety in mentioning the fact that Congress always has treated it as having that status. From the outset, Congress has required it to give merely advisory decisions. Okay, The point I want to make here is that a legislative court only gives advisory decisions. They mean nothing. Um, have a, and it has a duty to give decisions that are advisory only, so without force as judicial judgments may be laid on a legislative court. They're all legislative courts. It's a, remember when the judge is act, operating as a clerk, he's masquerading as a judge, uh, um, um, working for the prosecutor. It's an advisory decision only. Okay, they got to get your consent. They are Satanists. They are assaulting you is what they're doing. That's Williams versus United States Supreme Court. So the judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The police witness works for the state. A vast majority of the police uh, disputes that the police initiate on the behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And since no corpus delecti, mens rea or ax reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. And uh, therefore, the state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. They're nothing but a bunch of thieves. Allocution. 
a trial judge's formal address to a convicted defendant asking him to speak in mitigation of the sentence to be imposed. So that's the bottom line. You get to allocute. So you just sit there and say, well, I can't accept that. That's really what it comes down to. I can't accept that. Every taxpayer is assessed to K trust having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the public charitable trust, the constructive Sestic Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And that's a summary of the congressional record, five pages of the congressional record on June 13, 1967. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity, for when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised a new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted, not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafees to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use, and receiving the actual profits, while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiafee who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy to be bound in conscience to account to assistica use for the rents and emoluments of the estate, and to, to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. That is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, and volume two under the definition of Mortmain, and it says volumes. It says, first of all, it says that the Sestake Trust is created by the Roman cult, number one. It says, secondly, that the courts of equity were running the, 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 the I should say, the clergy, the Roman cult was running the courts of equity. And it says also that, the, that the, it talks about the taxes to be account for the rents and emoluments of the state. That's taxes. And it's... And it says that in 1835, the Sestake used was the foundation of modern conveyancing, and it still is today. Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristic of a minor, a mere private citizen, where private corporate commercial paper and securities is, is concerned. For purposes of suits, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from the government. And this is the Clearfield Doctrine, and this is why you're either the king or you're the slave. Once you go into commerce, you walk away from sovereignty and you become a slave. If you call yourself the secured party creditor, you're a slave. If you call yourself the uh, anything in, the, in commerce, you're a slave. And, and they completely ignore sovereign. If you say you're sovereign, they'll laugh you out of there because you're not. And, and these brain-dead idiots that go around saying, I'm the secured party creditor, are brain-dead idiots is what they are. Anyways, this video is not intended to scare anyone or make them feel like all is lost because it absolutely is not. We need to know what the problem is before we can know what a good solution is. Uh, if you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility and servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your uh, chain set lightly upon you, and may your posterity forget that you were ever our countrymen. And nobody could say it better than Samuel Adams. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. Um, and this last paragraph is for all the uh, uh, Satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity under the Federal Tax Lien Act. I, uh, uh, they can take their privileges and benefits and put them up their rectal orifice. I prefer a gold or silver coin. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profiles, I've got two of them, Sovereign Living and Sovereignty International now. My Facebook community page I deleted uh, due to censorship on the part of Facebook. And uh, my private group on sovereign on uh, Facebook called Sovereignty International is being deleted. It's hard to, to ban 17,000 people. Uh, anyways, my uh, Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I hope you get something out of it and have a real nice day.